It's President's Day, the kids are home, so we're doing a quick DIY in our kitchen, just like old times. So that way we can hang out with the kids while paint's drying. We're gonna be using this thrift store find end table, some joint compound, and our Crackalure stamp to create some texture and have a little bit of fun. So this is lightweight joint compound. It's designed for drywall. It's in this small little Tupperware because I've got a big five gallon bucket of it and I don't wanna work with that. It has a good amount of open time, so we're just going to apply it where we want to do the stamp, and then we'll come back and add the stamp. It can also be sanded, so don't worry about it being perfect. If you don't like a spot, you can smooth it out. So now that I've mostly got it spread on, I'm just gonna really lightly drag this across to float this and that's gonna mostly get it flat. So we're gonna let this dry for about five, 10 minutes so that it's not super damp, and then we're gonna go ahead and use the stamp on it, and that'll get us the texture we want various places. Here's our little sample board, just some scrap from the CNC machine, and this is the look we're gonna kind of be going for, and we'll show you how we got that texture and the detail with the color. I've got the IOD crack lure stamp. It's still on the mat that it came on. So I've got the stamp on here, placed it down. Now I'm just gonna press it down into that joint compound and I'm being careful not to go all the way up to the edges when I'm pressing because I don't want a square crisp edge here. Now that the pattern's in there, we're gonna let that dry out and then we might sand down some high spots. So if you're putting it on and it's wanting to pull back off or get high ridges, let it dry out for just a little bit longer. So you can see here, we've got real good crackle detail there, but this is a little high where it was a little too damp and it pulled it up out of the stamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and knock some of these high points down and kind of feather in where we have like this smudge here where it doesn't really take any texture at all. I'm just gonna hand sand this. If I were to take the orbital to this, it would take off too much too fast and just take it right down flush. So this little piece already had white swan on it. You don't actually need that for the technique that we're doing, but I already had it painted and then changed my mind. I'm going to be taking mint chip, not a ton of it, because this isn't very big, with some mermaid tail. I would say probably two parts mint chip to one part mermaid tail. We're guessing here. We're guessing. I'm just gonna mix it up till I get a color that I wanna work with. Kind of fun just like that. I know. And yes, I'm using a butter knife. <laughs> I'm like, did I just make old 57? Kind of a little bit. <laughs> no, it's a little lighter than old 57. Oh yeah, I was trying to go for like a greenish mermaid tail. <laughs> but this is pretty blue. Maybe I'll add some more mermaid chip. Now it's three parts mint chip to one part mermaid tail. I know, I feel like you just kind of mix it and just hope that you mix enough so you can paint it. This is gonna be more than enough for this project. Oh yeah, that's a Oh yeah, thing. this is better. This is better. Jamie's up on the step stool so she can reach this. You're not gonna see much with this first coat because it's just kind of solid. You can see a little bit right there. You can see the texture coming through where she didn't get full coverage.
So we like to do experimenting like this on small projects. Obviously we had the board that we use, but we don't know how it's gonna look on a whole project until we do it on an entire project. So keep it small when you're trying new stuff out. Okay, so I've got a sample of faded burlap and it just had maybe half an inch of paint in the bottom of it. And I filled the rest up with water. We're gonna make a wash out of this. And so basically about one part paint to six, seven, eight parts water, you want it real runny. I did the same thing with some leftover white swan in the bottom of this. And this is why I feel like we're always uh, paint hoarders when you get down to the bottom of the can. Cause if you have just a little bit of paint left, it's perfect for stenciling or washes. So save it. This hopefully should be what makes the detail popped. I haven't actually done this technique a ton. So I thought it'd be fun to play with on this. And I'm gonna start with the white swan wash and then have Zeb brush in that faded burlap along some of the details. And then I'm just going to pull some of that back off with a rag. I don't know. So we tried the faded burlap. We don't love that. So we're gonna nix that and just come with the white swan. I feel like sometimes it's a process. Okay, like every time I try something new, it's a process. Washes are kind of messy. Washes are kind of messy. <laughs> they get all over and then you gotta like come back through and, and finish everything. That's all right. It'll make the mint chip and mermaid tail pop back through. All right, so we are gonna tag team. Zeb is gonna be applying the white wax. I forgot to tell him I needed clear and he thought we had some. So we're using white wax to apply this and then we're gonna be using decrepit dust and then buffing it all in to get a fun aged effect. So you want me to just put it on heavy? Yeah, well, I mean, just normal. Whatever that means to you. Whatever normal means to me. Just get it on there. Well, and because this is not quite set up all the way, it will probably pull back some of the whitewash, which is good. All right, I think that that's good. So I'm using the JRV stencil brush to go ahead and add some of this decrepit dust. This is the dark decrepit dust, just to kind of work that into. And I'm working in small sections and I'm putting it on top of where I had the stamp so that way you can really see it down in the cracks. And if it gets too dark, I might come back with more white wax to lighten it up. Like, I, I need some white wax there. Right, wax. There. There we go. There we go. Definitely gonna need more white wax up here. Thank you. This is kind of using it to blend in. And soften it a little bit. So it started to look a little bit like the famous brown smear. So I've decided that the edges is where I'm gonna hit it with this decrepit dust. That way it's less smeary in the middle and just more highlighted around the edge. Using a clear or white wax will help you manipulate the dust better and you can almost use it like an eraser to pull it back. Like but, right here? Yeah, like right there. And then if you don't wait and you push like really hard, then it kind of gives you the highs and the lows and you start seeing that dark blue come through where all the texture is, which is kind of what you want. So I'm going the opposite direction of the brush strokes to kind of smooth them out and to kind of build some of that texture and pull some of that base coat out.
So we're out of DIY clear wax at the house and it's all at the shop. We wanna get this finished, so I'm gonna use some Sweet Pickens oil wax. It'll give it a little bit more of a satin finish and I feel like it'll highlight some of those highs and lows. The thing about this oil wax is that you brush it on, you let it sit for 20 or 30 minutes and then you rub it off. You can buff it to a high sheen or just leave it satin. Because this is clay paint, anytime you put a wax on it, it's really just gonna brighten those colors up. And when I buff it off, I feel like it'll pull out some of those highs and lows in the clay. All right, I think our grand experiment was a success. Halfway through the process, I was like, what did I do? And then I started to add the dark and decrepit dust and I'm like, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna fix this. But I just kept manipulating it, working with the white wax, buffing it in. I feel like we use pretty much every technique we know to get this thing looking the way Jamie wanted it to. Well, and the thing about the decrepit dust is it's a much softer look than a dark wax, which is definitely right up my alley. I'm glad we started on a little piece because I have a big piece in the shop that I want to take this technique and maybe go just a little bit further with. So my suggestion when you're trying out something new, don't do it on grandma's heirloom. A little side table is perfect. Make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and products. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.